Yeah, sell all my game stocks and put them into Bowcoin. No, not Bitcoin, Bowcoin. It's new. But Jason, what? Hey, man, yeah. are we even supposed to be in the same shot? We can be now. Really? Yeah. We can? We can. We can do it. Let's do it. All right. Later. Later. You're doing on purpose, sing like a sing on key. Talk to the girl that intimidates you, pretend that you're brilliant and charming. I said, pretend that you're brilliant and charming. Yes, everybody, welcome to Later with Jason Sewell. So glad that you're tuned in. And we've got an exciting show lined up. Guess what? We have in studio guests me. joining us. One of them in studio, me. is Bo Counts. I'm here. But it is a little bit different, Bo, because you're not over at your podium. You're no, right we here. can touch. <laughs> It's amazing. It is amazing. Uh, and we do have great content lined up. But before we get we to all that, I got a question for you because yeah. we're kind of in the heat of summer right now. <sighs> no I know. kidding. Seriously, it's hot. No kidding. Eh? Yeah. It takes me. I get no respect <laughs> from the heat. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be the answer to my question. Uh, I remember a lot of things doing, doing a lot of things when I was a kid in the summer that I don't really do much anymore. I'm wondering if you have a similar experience. Like for me, like I'll from give childhood. It, yeah. So here's what I remember. I remember sitting on my mama's porch. Oh, mama, mama is what we called her. I know, on oh, mama. And uh, and and shucking peas. I can remember doing this shucking for hours. Shucking peas. Uh, I don't really do that anymore because I don't have a garden. I don't have access did, to peas to shuck. I did plenty shuck. of that when I was a kid too. But uh, anything else? It was corn. We shucked corn okay. at my Nana's house. Okay, yeah, so um, similar. Yeah. We Because we lived actually right next to a, 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 a cornfield. Uh -huh. And me and my Nana would, uh, there was a spot in the fence you, that you could you could sneak into, which we weren't supposed to, and we would we would borrow the corn from the cornfield. And one time we got shot at with a shotgun. What? Um, yeah, we're talking I Alabama hope you don't do that anymore. memories. <laughs> you know, that's some real Southern stuff right there. Uh, but, you know, when I was a kid, I used to ride my bike all the time and everywhere, and I haven't been on a bicycle in a long time. I mean, we're such a bike-friendly area, I know. too. What's my problem? we right? got to get you back on a bike. <laughs> That's a segment right there. <laughs> I get <laughs> Bo back on a bike. It's very yeah. alliterative. I think we could That's make that work. Bees. That's a lot of bees. That's a lot of bees. Yeah, you know what else we have a lot of on this show is a lot of fun. That's right. Check it out. We've got Sonia Gutierrez joining us on the program now. Sonia, she's doing so much in Northwest Arkansas. I'm particularly interested in her salsa that she's going to be bringing by. I'm always interested in salsa. Yes. I mean, if you can eat salsa while listening to salsa while and doing, some, doing salsa? some salsa, yeah. oh, that's salsa trio. That's it. You can't beat it. Yes. And we've got Randall Shreve on the program. Randall, of course, Northwest Arkansas music royalty really joining us on tonight's show. And then you're going to be making some drinks for us. Can you tease a little bit what you're going to be making? I am. Well, us? I knew that Sonia was going to come on right. and I knew that she was going to make some salsa. So I'm going to do a Latin American favorite. Oh. So it's going to be a very tasty beverage. So. Oh, I can't wait. Can I do salsa while I am oh, yeah. drinking your beverage? It'll be like exhibit up in here. Yo, dog, heard you like salsa. And coming up right now, we've got Instagram Pa joining us. I cannot wait to have this guy back on the show. He's going to be talking about technology from somewhere in the wilderness. Or something. I don't know, something. He's probably going to be talking about Mama and Nana's <laughs> peas and corn. He could be. He could be. So stick around for that. And then all the rest of the fun, it's happening later. Hey, hey. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Oh, Instagram Paul here. Hey, summertime's coming up, and this summer, people are wanting to get outside, I think. <laughs> a little bit more than usual. The ticks are gonna be bad this year. They say the ticks from this uh, this winter didn't all freeze out, and Cooter has uh, developed a new kind of a tick smear with garlic and uh, apple cider vinegar and some uh, eucalyptus oil, cedar oil, uh, lots of essential oils in there, tea tree oil, also a little gasoline and some ammonia. And you rub that on you, and I tell you, yeah, yeah, you smell bad. You smell worse than a landfill on a bad day, but <laughs> hey, no ticks. You gotta watch for the ticks, so uh, seriously, folks, get out there, drink plenty of water when you are out there. Uh, water skiing, 
I like to water ski. I like to go run it in the woods sometimes, uh, climbing trees, and that's how you will get tick bit. If you do get tick bit, go online, get you some of that digital currency, you can wipe it out with some tick bit coin, and that will cure it. In the summertime is when uh, people need to get together again, talk, not like last summer. We need to get together as humanly as possible. But when you do get too close, make sure you have been also uh, vaccinated. You've both been vaccinated. I think that's not a problem anymore. Cooter, uh, Cooter picked up 30 vials of uh, vaccine and he had been going around secretly injecting people that he knows didn't get vaccinated. And uh, you know, he's just trying to make sure everybody's safe. He's joined this new group, uh, Doctors Without Diplomas, to make people safer out there. And we appreciate him and his tick smear campaign. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people without a life jacket on out there trying to swim. And there's nothing worse than somebody, an adult who doesn't know how to swim and says they're too embarrassed to take swimming classes, that they, they'd rather drown, they said, than be embarrassed by taking swimming classes as an adult. There's nothing wrong with that. I take them, I give them. And uh, I, I think it's a good way to learn to swim is with lessons, be thrown in the deep end. Sometimes that's like life. Sometimes you gotta just jump in, you know? <laughs> jump in and see what happens. But wear your life jacket. Be a little safe there. Don't fully jump in. Jump in to where you're knee deep, you know? It's like my grandpa used to say, don't go full on anything you're not that sure about. But then when you are, that's it. Go full all the way. Hey, this is Instagram Paul coming at you. Be careful, get offline. We don't need to see what your kid ate every five minutes or what you said every five minutes. Let's 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 turn off the Instagram Pauls and the Instagrams and everything else and just go out, enjoy yourself in the hot, hot summertime. <laughs> eat some watermelon for Instagram Paul. It's like spitting seeds straight at somebody else's face, but they dodge just in time. Happy summer! Sam's Furniture doing good. Shine a spotlight on your neighborhood. Well, we're relaxing here at Sam's Furniture, and we've got Brandon Swoboda, Habitat for Humanity, Washington County, joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Tell me about the work that um, the Washington County Habitat for Humanity does. Yeah, so we're focused on helping low income families achieve home ownership. And the way that they do that is they come to us as a partner family. They put in 300 hours of sweat equity. We find volunteers like you, sponsors come alongside. We build the house together. They buy the ha house from Habitat at a 0% interest loan and become homeowners. Wow, that's such an amazing thing. You know, really you hear is. about Habitat for Humanity all the time, but to hear that it's it's happening yeah. right here in right North Arkansas, North. Washington County. That's, that's right. Great. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if people are watching, they want to get involved, maybe they want to contribute some hours, maybe they want to volunteer, how, yeah. how, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, so they can find us on the web, Habitat for Humanity Washington County, or you can find us on Facebook as well and help these low-income families get into home ownership. It's yeah. pretty awesome. It's so important. Brandon, yeah. thank you for hey, taking the time. And I wonder if Sam's would take sweat equity for this table. Welcome back, everybody. Later with Jason Sewell. So glad that you are tuned in. And we are so glad to welcome an in-studio guest. We've got Sonia joining us. Thank you so much for visiting with us today, Sonia. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about a lot of things because you have so much going on here in our community. But kind of talk to us about your journey from the new design school to the city council and everything in between. Fill us in. It was a really natural progression from being involved in the nonprofit community um, to then getting involved with the city on economic development. I was on the um, economic development committee back in 2009 after the recession. Right. And so then I got involved and learned more about the city and the staff and connected with people there. And that's how I got interested in city council. Yeah. So then I ran uh, twice. The first time I didn't win. And then this last um, time did. I was successful for uh, Ward 1. Um, and then now uh also dabbling into some salsa yeah so I know. kind of mixing it all yeah, together yeah mixing it up like yes. salsa right yeah. i mean once upon a time I, re I remember when we first met it was back in those early days of the arts nonprofit world and we were right. doing weird events and it's just so interesting to see a fellow community member like sticking with and investing in this in this town and uh, seeing what can what can change i think just to see the growth of the creative economy and how we've all kind of taken what we've learned and 
stacked it on top of each other and then made new new things. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, being creative in that. So so you're on the economic development side, is that right, of the council? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now we're working with a lot of really incredible community members, mm -hmm. a big committee. It's got to be over 30 people wow. um, from all different sectors and then taking input on what would be the best way to use the funds from the uh, American Rescue Plan that Biden has kind of given out to the states and now we're going to be able to propose some ideas on how to use that fund. Wow. Somehow they exciting. invited me to be a part yeah. of that. <laughs> I know. What are they thinking? <laughs> I'm not all jokes and games. <laughs> no, you are. You can be serious when you need to be for sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Salsa for Change. Tell sure. me about it. Yeah. So um, Salsa for Change came about last year, like about a couple months before COVID. Um, we, uh, Brad Harvey, who's my partner in that business, yeah. and I decided what do we want to do to really kind of think about our continuing uh, entrepreneurial journey sure. and potentially something that we might be able to retire on. Yeah. So our idea is to build a For Change brand. And okay. the For Change brand is that a portion of some part of the product would then go back to the community to help you know make a change in the community so we started with salsa as our first category in there um, and so a dollar of every jar goes to new beginnings in south fayetteville for transitional housing for the homeless wow yeah. that is so encouraging and i have a jar of your salsa right here you were generous enough to provide us with one salsa for change this yeah. is the salsa roja it's a medium salsa right yes Man, it's our it's delicious. our most popular um, we have a verde as well that's made with tomatillos Ooh. and this one's made with roma tomatoes we call this a bold medium. Oh, yeah. So, like on a 10 scale, it's like a six That's and a half. That's my waistline. That's it's a bold, a bold medium. medium. <laughs> Can we get a shot of this right here? This salsa, it looks absolutely delicious. How many flavors yeah. do you have at all? How many yeah. varieties of this? There's six. Okay. Um, so, the, the red and the green, the tomatillo and the Roma tomatoes, mm -hmm. comes in mild, medium, and hot. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, as you say, right here on the label, it says $1 of each jar is donated to charity. That's awesome right, that you're right. giving back in that yes, way. Very we're, exciting. We're thrilled. Uh, we set up the company as a benefit corporation, so we have an accountability measure for us to, um, as the company grows, to continue to keep that uh, in place. And also, as in, in if, when, whenever we do sell it, yeah. that that's part of what it's all about. I love it. It stays yeah. with it, right? Mm -hmm. For our viewers right now, where can they pick up a jar of this salsa? Yeah, so the best place is the uh, farmer's market. Yeah, of we course. love to see everybody at the farmer's market because um, we get to see you in person. Yeah. And then um, but Ozark Natural Foods carries it. Um, and then we've got a couple of boutiques, one in Bentonville, one in Rogers as well. Awesome. Yeah. So you got to get yourself a hand, your hands on the jar of salsa for change. Sonia, yeah. will you stick around? Sure. Bo is going to make us some drinks and maybe okay. we can have some of this salsa along that with sounds, us. Oh, that's a good pairing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Stay with us, folks. That fun is going to happen later.
Welcome back, everybody. We're down here at the chef's table. Of course, Bo Counts is here, going to be mixing us up a special cocktail. And Sonia Gutierrez sticking around and bringing your salsa. I can't wait to dive into this. This looks absolutely delicious. Uh, if you don't know Bo, obviously, he's at Pinpoint in Fayetteville. you got to come check him out. But what are you making for us right now, Bo? So one of our most popular drinks this summer has been a, a Paloma. A Paloma is kind of like the, the, the brother sister to the margarita. Uh, and it is only in recent years really started to take the U.S. by storm. It's so easy. It's so classic. Anybody can make it. Really, it's just tequila and grapefruit soda. But being a cocktail bar, we like to take it up a little bit, and we are very well known for our Palomas. So. Now, does the Paloma pair well with this salt, the chips and salsa? Palomas pal pair well with anything <laughs> summer, uh, and anything with citrus and anything with spice. Like it's 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 going to go so great with this uh, this cocktail. Well, I'm going to get started on this. Why so, you make that over there? The easiest thing is you don't even need to shake it like you just you, you give it two ounces of tequila you can go right in the glass which is called a built cocktail that's 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 what you mean by built uh, you add a little bit of lime juice if you don't have one of these at home best 20 bucks you'll ever spend don't squeeze it with your hands don't get one of those big fancy juicers like boom, boom. half a lime is a half ounce of, of juice it's super easy goes right into the glass you get so much juice out of these. Everybody's everybody needs to have. One Everybody's of these doing it. You got to get yourself one it's of these what all squeezers. The cool kids are doing. I have one. I highly. I have two. I highly recommend them. See, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Another secret to making a good margarita or paloma, a lot of people don't realize, is agave nectar. Don't use simple syrup. Don't use any of that. Get agave nectar. That's what tequila's made with. It's made with agave. I just do a little bit just to taste. Why you know, that? Why that over simple syrup or the other? Uh, things because agave about? is the natural sweetening agent in. Tequila, and right. it just blends together okay. a lot better. It makes those flavors marry each other in a way that's just perfect. So you've got the base right there. I usually like to give it a little bit of a stir. You can use a knife or a bar spoon, whatever you whatever got. Whatever you got, whatever you got, right? Whatever you got laying around the house. Really long finger. Really long <laughs> finger, I know that. You can do it, especially if you're making a Negroni. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Normally, you'd add ice and uh, a little bit of grapefruit soda. I like to add a little bit of ruby red grapefruit juice. Oh. So just like up in the grapefruit juice ante, not much, half ounce, quarter ounce, whatever. Then this is where the debate comes in. Uh oh, bum, 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 bum. Grapefruit soda. You can get Horitos at any of your Hispanic markets. I really like Q grapefruit tonic. I think this is what we have at our bar. This is what we use a lot. But if I'm at home, 
I'm a Fresca man. Okay, of this course you a, are. It's a classic. It's no calorie, so if you're trying to get like those, uh, you know, diet cocktails in, Fresca is the way to go. So you want to add your ice. Super easy. Everybody knows what ice is. You, you add your ice first before you put in the before bubbles. Before you put in the bubbles. Yeah. Always, always, always. Because sometimes if you put in the ice second, the bubbles come flying out. Right. Yeah. That's what you want to avoid for sure. Right. All right. Boom. You make a mess with ice. Then you just give it the soda topper. Just top it off. Mm. Oof. Boom. And you can garnish with either a lime wheel, which looks really nice, or a grapefruit. A grapefruit wedge. So boom. Which also looks fancy. Boom. A little straw, and you're set. Now, I know you're making these for us right now, obviously, on the show, but do you have these for sale at the bar also, Bo? One of our most popular cocktails. Right. It's a, a classic Paloma, easy, no questions asked. We had a frozen one last month. Uh, we might bring that back, but this is what we got. Let's do it. Cheers, guys. Okay, yeah, cheers. Uh, here, which one do you I'll want? Good, so lime for sure. Lime for yes. sure. Well, cheers. cheers, absolutely, yes. Cheers, let me get one of awesome. these. Awesome, yeah, you yeah. gotta get in on that, and you gotta get some salsa if you haven't already. Stick around, folks, we got more happening later. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in later with Jason Sewell. Remember, of course, you can find us on your social media platforms. You can send us an email over at laterwithjasonsewell.com. You can also watch all of our previous content. It's available for you on our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Subscribe and like us. That's right. Do it. Before we leave this episode, we do have to thank our guests, starting with Lens Audio for providing that amazing vi music video from Randall Shreve. Also, Sonia Gutierrez for bringing us some tasty salsa. That's right. And let's not forget about Bo Counts. These yeah. Palomas are amazing. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Happy summer. Happy See summer. you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile.